Welcome to Hustle is for Life Motivation. If you are watching this right now, you are an awesomeness junkie. You are hungry to receive more awesomeness and really truly accelerate your life and take it to the next level. I am Talal, your host, and my job is to bring on amazing people who have achieved extraordinary results in their life and are doing amazing things to change other people's lives. So you can truly learn from them and follow in their footsteps and achieve the same results that they have managed to create in their lives. Now tonight I have an amazing guest with me. He has been an entrepreneur for 18 years. He has more than three decades of superior customer service experience. He's a lifetime, lifetime student of personal growth and motivation. And the cool thing is he's actually an expert on Twitter. He's got more than 250,000 connections on Twitter. He's a highly respected entrepreneur and he's also a business life and social media coach. He has helped loads of people build huge followings on Twitter and he's got a very systematic approach, a very formulaic approach on how people can use Twitter to reach out, make an impact, build an audience around their cause and just really accelerate their life, their business, their career, whatever it is that they're focused on. So please help me welcome the amazing Gary Loper on the show. Gary, thanks for taking the time to be here with us. Oh. Th thanks, tell all. It, it, it's a pleasure. It's you know just going out to be able to share what we can with the world and just you know make it better, or tweet at a time, whatever we can be able to do because it's it's just really amazing because it's you know it's just a you know a, an opportunity to be able to share with people because I know that tw Twitter and social media can really open up the world, new worlds to people. So let's let's just dive into it and see what we see how we can help. Absolutely. And you know what, Gary, I'm really hoping that we will go deep in there with this conversation because I know there are lots of people out there who probably have set up a Twitter profile and they've put a few things on there. They probably didn't get a lot of response and they gave up. And it's just sitting there. You're talking to one of them right now, okay? So, <laughs> so I'm hoping that we can kind of do, dig a bit deep in this conversation and really... Uh, you know, make the audience aware of what's really truly possible by leveraging social media. Oh, there, there's there's so much, but you know that's probably one of the biggest mistakes for a lot of people is they get on and it does does get very overwhelming. Because mm. if you look at trying to be able to follow everything that's going on, and I just tell people, you know, it's like if you went to a stadium, it's full of people. It's a networking event. Yeah. So there's like a hundred thousand people that are there. Mm. Are you going to want to try to be able to figure out what everybody's talking about? Yeah. Or do you or do you want to try to find a way to be able to find the people who are having the conversations that you could add to or that you could learn from? That's the biggest wow. thing is you, you you want to be able, you know, you don't want to know about everything. Mm. You want to be able to craft your tweets that anybody can find it, it that you can solve their problems. Yeah. But really to be able to keep up with stuff Stay, you know, pick some lanes. What do you want to learn? What can you share and go through there? And it's demystified. You know, the profile is, you know, a, a great place to start. I think that's the most valuable real estate that you can have on social media. Yeah. Be it's the first impression. When somebody clicks onto your page mm. and they see that, this is the first impression. You got four to 10 seconds to be able to impress upon them who you are, what you can do for them, and you know, and establish that level of expertise. Yeah. So you got four to 10, you got four to 10 seconds. So mm -hmm. your profile needs to be able to say your profile, the, the bio, you get 160 characters and those are searchable. Mm, right. So I tell, I tell people, you know, don't fill this up with superfluous words. Like I like to work with people who like to go for moonlight walks. Mm. It's like, okay, so social media coach, motivation speaker, bump up. You know, what are people typing into a search engine that that will increase your probability of being able to be found? Wow. wow. And so, uh, so pe people that profile, so you're not going to be able to be found if you don't tell people what what you're doing. Yeah. That banner behind, that banner behind is something. That's a billboard. It's it's a billboard. You can be able to go and advertise, and to be able to give people a visual idea of mm. who you are and what they can be able to expect. You know, mine has got little thumbnail pictures of my eBooks. Yeah. 
but. how they can connect with me on other social media sites mm. and my and my profile the words of my profile are restated up on that billboard now those are static they're not live links right and but you know i we customize them with bitly to make them easy for you to be able to run down you know bit you know bit.ly forward slash gary mt is for the master of twitterverse ebook right so it's something that's easy somebody can write down and grab and go mm. but you got to get that first impression and then that's going to allow them to be able to scroll down and go look it's okay what do you what is this guy tweeting about yeah and this was one of the things we, we tell people this is like my empty empty parking lot syndrome when I when I was younger, lived back in Wisconsin, you know, the kids always hated our aimless excursions to nowhere. Right. We'd just get in the car and we'd drive all of these country roads. And this was before the phones and anything else. So we had to rely on billboards on where the restaurants were. Mm. And so we we see, okay, we're hungry. See a, see a billboard says Ma's restaurant five miles away. So we're waiting. We drive up to Ma's restaurant. And there's no cars in the parking lot. No. I could have really, it could have really great food, but nobody's going into a place with an empty parking lot. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to go where there's other traffic and something else. So that's why I tell people is that you got to fill your tweet stream with great tweets that represent those cars in a parking lot. Mm. And so people will see, hey, these are retweeted, or there's comments, or there's likes on it. Yeah. It says, okay, somebody else has already tried and tried and tested this person yeah and they're followable and now i can feel comfortable following them yeah yeah obviously that makes so, sense so that that that's a starting place but i think one of the biggest things where people get lost to when they start is they don't have a purpose hmm. you know it's like anything else you start a business you have a business plan you have a purpose you have a vision yeah social social media no matter what platform has got filled with so many rabbit holes that you can go get lost in. And so if you're going to be here, if you're tweeting for your business, you know, tweet about your business. You want to also inject some of your personality to give people a reason to be able to differentiate you from everybody else. Yeah. But, you know, there, there, there's just so much. I, you know, I got a 12 hour course so we, <laughs> that I can do and I don't know how I can be able to, con I don't know how I can, de can condense it all into a couple minutes for you. <laughs> Sure, sure. No, that's awesome, Gary. Thank you for sharing that. I mean, everything you're talking about there just makes so much sense when you say it, right? It makes so much sense. But I think a lot of people are actually overwhelmed by just so much going on there, just so much traffic. And it's hard to, it's hard to kind of, you know, find, find a space for yourself. I'm just actually curious for people who are maybe just beginners and they are trying to establish some sort of you know link with social media and who are feeling a little bit overwhelmed because there's instagram there's facebook there's twitter there's linkedin there's this there's that there's snapchat why is twitter important why they need to be on twitter what what can you tell us about twitter that makes it such a powerful platform well for me the differentiation always was i made better connections on twitter i could be able to talk to people you know, real quick, in the people that I've met around the world, right? They've been more open to be able to talk. You know, when we were talking beforehand, you know, we also talked about that. The fact is that there's no vetting on Twitter. Mm. I can follow anybody, and anybody can follow me. Mm. And all the other platforms, you need to be able. You know, you need to. I have to approve you to be able to my Facebook. And now Facebook, I've reached 5,000, so nobody else can be able to come and be, be my friend. So you'd have to follow the business kind of stuff. Yeah. And so there really isn't a connection. And I just think the theme of some of the other platforms aren't really the social aspect. Right. I really like the fact that, you know, like 24-7, people can be able to find you. Mm. And that's why. And no vetting. And if you word your craft your tweets well... Like we said, it, everybody's online to solve their problems one way or another. Mm, yeah. And and so I use this analogy that, you know, especially, you know, and your main focus should not be promotion, and we can be able to talk about that. But when you do your promotion, it should be crafted kind of like the, the short, sexy titles in the, mag, you know, the magazines and, and the grocery, grocery checkouts. Yeah. There's the Star, the Inquirer, Cosmo. 
you know, they all have short, sexy titles. Get the guy, lose the guy, try this recipe, go this vacation, do this. And p- you're going to pick that up because you're going to want to know that solution. Mm. Whether whether or not, you know, it, it's a weightlifting supplement, you know, bigger tries or whatever, whatever the magazine is, you're going to look at that cover and it's got those short, sexy titles that entice you to be able to pick that magazine up and look, oh, how can I do this for me? Yeah, yeah. And that's what your tweets, that's what, that, you use the same rules and do that to your tweets so you entice people to be able to click on your stuff. Mm. But you also have, you know, first off, you know, that, that's a secondary part of it. You have to be able to build their trust and rapport. Yeah. So, yeah. You, so you just can't be there and be there about promotion. you got, you know, 80% of your stuff needs to be other focused. Mm. You know, I have my four E's of effective tweeting. Your tweets should be educational. They need to be entertaining. They need to enhance the lives of other people. And they need to be engaging. Right. I love it. I love and, it. Yeah, so if you work at 80% of your tweets have one or more of those f- features, mm. then when you do your 20% of promotion, then you look at, okay, your tweets are need to be crafted as problems, solving problems for other people. That's a real quick, quick thing, you know, shortcut on how you can be able to be uh, great on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, 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 awesome, awesome. And I know Twitter is uh, still kind of like a growing platform. It's still a developing platform. Um, there's a lot of scope there because it's short, it's focused. And like you said, you know, anybody can join uh, and, and, and kind of come in and, and connect with you and you can connect with anybody else. So that's really powerful. For people who might be inspired by this and they're saying, oh, this is great. I, I like the fact that I can connect with anybody. It's 24 7, 365 and anybody can connect with me. Really powerful. I can keep it short. I don't have to write lengthy stuff and I don't have to worry about, you know, being too formal and putting in the greetings and all sorts of other stuff. But at the same time, they're, they're just not sure how they can get started and grow their following, grow their audience. Because essentially, like you said, everybody's there to find a solution. What's the, what's the first thing they need to be thinking about when they first join Twitter on, in terms of, you know, they need to follow a systematic way? What's step one in that system? system? Well, first is your, your purpose, your passion. Right. Why are you here? So that, that will give you the topic of what your 80% of your tweets are going to be about. Mm. So if you look at my messages, you know, there, yeah. there's a lot of motivational messages because that's a very important thing and I want to be able to motivate. Yeah. You know, it also fits into my love language, uh, you know, words of affirmation. So there's, it, that really is my purpose is to motivate and, make, and help people you know, make, make themselves even better. Mm. So that purpose is there the bio and going through there but one of the biggest the questions that i always get for people is that you know how do i get more followers which i think maybe what you're talking is is i tell them is you know in order to be a great to get followers you have to become a great follower first right and it's kind of like going to the gym or training for a marathon you know you, you don't start out going to the gym bench pressing 400 pounds <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and so so like anything else it's a process you have to be able to learn and just grow grow through it you know and i tell people you know when you first get on you know don't try to sell anything until you have 2000 tweets and 2000 followers yeah and the reason is is there's that learning curve how mm-hmm. do i get my thoughts down from you know all the things that are going through my brain down to 140, but now now it's 280. How do you get it down? Even 280 is can be very limiting at times. Yeah. But it takes a little while to be able to figure that out. You also have in that time. You're also going to be able to learn how to gauge your audience. Yeah. Because we talked about those four E's. What do they find is entertaining? You mm-hmm. could find something that's entertaining, and. And you could put put something out there, and it's just like crickets. Nobody's going to respond to it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you got to go find out what your audience is. And so the really probably the bottom line through all of this is your purpose, getting a profile out there, but really is having a focus on serving other people. Hmm. I think that's the biggest 
the biz, biggest success that people who have gotten it and will get it, is who are going to be others focused. Yeah. People who are just out there promoting <coughs> or they just have a news feed or something else that, and it doesn't show any kind of engagement, any kind of interconnection. Yeah. Because social media has leveled the playing field. Hmm. You know, Tony Robbins and I have the same amount of, of tweet space that we can be able to use. You know, so his motivation is one level. Mine's another thing, but we, you know, whatever your competition is, you got the same same characters. Yeah. So there's a your consumers have a lot of choices. So what are they? What's going to differentiate you from everybody else? Mm. So this is something that's important. You know, I, I had clients who love Star Wars. So we found a lot of Star Wars quotes, and we inter and we put those into his his sales tips messages. Yeah. Another guy was a big Star Trek kind of guy, and or somebody else was a you know a lot more metaphysical. So we brought in a lot of the Hay House authors and 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 some of those things. So you know, and there was a uh, a coach that I worked with who was a speech coach who had a bout of lung cancer from a gluten issue. Right. And and so she started tweeting about gluten free diet stuff because it, it how it pertains mm. to public speaking. You know, gluten is going to blow up your belly and everything else, so you're not going to look good up on stage if you got a bloated belly. So it's important, and the, though all of those things are little differentiations, so that the audience has a reason to take a step closer to you because they got a lot of choices, and you got to give them a reason and comfort that they're, they know that they're going to be treated well, and especially if they invest in you, that they, they can feel good about it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And you're right. It, it is about making sure that you are meeting the needs of the audience rather than actually be there and you're doing whatever you think is right. But actually, you're not really answering people's questions. You're not solving their problems, and you're, they're feeling ignored. So nobody's going to follow you at that point. Exactly. You know, this was a big thing that I, I'm still learning. I had a coach who's, you know, um, she pre-sold a best-selling book that she never wrote, that she didn't wow. write yet. Wow. Be, because she wanted to be able to, she, she went out there and she had the idea. Mm. So what, you know, here's the idea of this book. And as her, her, pre, her pre-launch thing came up, <coughs> all the ideas and questions and comments and so she was writing it because then she already saw okay the pre-launch is successful so we can go ahead mm. how many times are people writing programs and writing courses that nobody ever goes to yeah yeah so i really i really love that idea is like okay, you know you got to be able to be a little bit bolder and just say okay let's just go out and sell the idea mm. Then I'll build a program once I know that it's going to be successful. Wow. And, and did, did she actually manage to do that through Twitter? Um, no, she, did, she doesn't do Twitter too much, but she did it with a lot of, through a lot of her other pro, uh, platforms, other affiliates, her, her communities, mm. and a lot of other things. So it's so I really, I really like that idea, and I know that I have to be able to let go of my, sort of my control and want to be. Oh, I guess got to be able to be so right, and then yeah. we just never get we just never get started because we're it's never right it's never right enough for us. Of course, of course, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, Gary, I mean, that was phenomenal. You you added a lot of value there, and uh, you know, showed the audience what it's all about, what Twitter is really all about, and I, and I really like that. But I'm also wondering what advice can you give them in terms of how often they need to tweet and what kind of material they need to be tweeting because obviously when you're trying to build an audience you're trying to engage with that audience like what's a good frequency to have because obviously you have other things to be looking after as an entrepreneur as somebody who's starting up or somebody who's you know kind of leveraging a cause they have a passion for something how often do they need to be on Twitter to get that visibility and start to attract those people? Well, I really think that if you're look, if you're doing this for a business for a cause, you need to be tweeting a minimum of twenty times a day. Oh wow! Okay. Okay, so that's a reaction we get from a lot of people. They go, yeah. "Oh wow! What, what the <laughs> hell am I going to? What the hell am I going to tweet twenty times a day?" Yeah. yeah. Okay, and okay, so remember our previous conversation. It's not about you. Mm. 
So we would look at this. So 20 tweets a day, it should be, you know, seven to 10 of them should be retweets of other people's stuff. Okay. Right. You know, you know, three to five of those things should be articles that help sort of cement your expertise. Okay. You know, so, and that's not a necessarily an article that if you're selling vitamins, it's not a company article saying how good our vitamins are, you know, come across as a health expert. Yeah. Nutrition expert. Give us John Hopkins. Give us Mayo Clinic. Give us something mm. that validates the use of this stuff, and these, and then your products are something that you recommend. Yeah. So retweets, uh, articles, engagements, going back and saying thank you for following, thank you for retweeting. Hey, I really liked your blog. Oh, I I I, I liked your banner. I saw uh, you got a new picture. It's just something else. It's just create engagement, and I think that's engagement is always the most valuable thing because. Like 40%, maybe even more, of all the active users on Twitter are kind of voyeurs. Mm. They're watching. Mm. And so they want to be able to see that you're engaging, that you have a real voice, so that if they need you, they can trust trust you. Or what I think is even better is if they, they trust me, they're going to be able to refer me to other people. Yeah, yeah. So you so so those engagements, and then you got like two two of those things are self promotion. Yeah. Now you you can be able to do that in about fifteen minutes a day. Right. If you use a mm-hmm. if you use a tool like TweetDeck or Hootsuite, and we can show you in our classes and uh, and they're real easy to be able to do. You can use a dashboard and you can be able to have columns of any of the lists that you're following. Or you know hashtags that you're following, right. and then you can just go. You can scroll through. Already, people that you know and trust are going to put good content out. Mm. So if you're looking for good good motivational messages, I hope you'll list me, and then you'll know you'll have good stuff that you can be able to put a couple of those messages out a week. Yeah, and be able to share it, and boom, 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 and you're done. And this is something also that, that just sort of grows. Again, this is our going to the gym analogy. Mm. You got to learn how to walk before you run, yeah. and I think that's one of the biggest mistakes. Is somebody's going to look, come on, and, and they're just going to start, and they're going to look at, oh, well, I want Gary's audience. Well, yeah. my primary account just went over two hundred thousand. My backup account has got eighty-eight thousand people, and they're going to look at that and they go, wow, I want that. Mm. Okay, I started in two thousand eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, yeah, and I've been building that, and I think that's always something. Is somebody is comparing their chapter one or chapter five to somebody else's chapter thirty? Mm. Yeah, yeah. And, and and so just just go and lift the five pound dumbbells for a while. It takes a little while. Mm. Read some free eBooks. Take courses. That's what I. That's where I learned a lot of the stuff. And then I go, okay, well, I learned a lot of stuff. But I also felt that I found out that I knew much more than what some of the people were teaching. Yeah, because I was able to apply my marketing and sales background and customer service background and the, and the relationship aspect and said, said, okay, you know, this is really a great tool that you can be able to go there and build trust and rapport. And you know, kind of in a sales process, you're identifying needs and problems and pre-answering objections. Mm. Now those can those can all be intertwined in the stuff that you tweet. So it just goes on, and so you're sort of subconsciously programming or letting people know this is my process, here's my services, and so then when the offer does come up and they see it, yeah, yeah, more clicks, more clicks. <laughs> yeah, more clicks, yeah. So it's you have to give before you take, right? Exactly in yeah. everything and everything in life, especially mm-hmm. social media is or anything else. But you know, one of the quotes we have is, you know, if you want to be loved, you got to be lovable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, if you want engagement, mm. you just if you get on there and you just come up there, well, I'm just put it out there and I put questions up there and nobody answered my question. It's like okay, well, nobody knows you. Mm. <laughs> You haven't built the trust in anything else. So let your audience go see you answering somebody else's questions and going through that. you got to be able to go give what you most want first. Yeah, 
and then the universe brings it all back to you 10 or 100 times fold but it'll come from unexpected places yeah. so you can't put it out one place and say oh well you, you kind of like you owe me that's 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 bookkeeping that's a debits and credits and you get this balance yeah. but you have to have a bigger bigger faith that the universe is out there and it's kind of the karma you just put it out there and it's just going to come back. And the more you put out, the more comes back. Awesome. My belief, and that's that's what, uh, and it's working in our life. So it's we know that it works. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Now, Gary, I'm I'm sitting here, and I I can see that you're very passionate about it. This is something that you know you have a very good understanding of. You love sharing it with other people. You're very open about it. You're very genuine about it, and it really shows. So that's that's really awesome. The fact that you know, you're not, you have this knowledge and you're not just holding it to yourself. You're actually willing to share it with other people and, you know, help them along their journey. And I think that's really powerful. So thank you for sharing that. That was, uh, that was awesome. Oh, my pleasure. You know, there's, and there, and there's so much, there's so much we can be able to share on things. And we didn't even talk, talk about, you know, making sure people are consistent, mm. hashtags and memes and ways to be able to connect. So there's just so much more. And, you know, like I said, you know, find you find me find ebooks. I'm doing free Twitter trainings every other Tuesday night, so just follow my stream for the for links for those things. Awesome. And there those things are up on YouTube, just a raw video, so you can be able to get a little peek. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. Well, Gary, what I'll do is obviously I'll I'll put all the uh, links and the tags below in the description of the video so people can click on it and uh, you know access them that way. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, I'm going to pause. No problem. I was, I was doing a Twitter training uh, Tuesday night. All oh, right. And we we're doing and we we're doing something different because you know, somebody asked me to do an interview during a tweet chat. Oh right, okay. So I, I brought the tweet chat into my my training. So I'm doing it on Zoom, and the tweet chat is keep on refreshing. So. That in Zoom is just pulling too much on, so the computer was just always lagging and, yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. So, I, and so, a couple of years ago, when I first started doing this, and computers, fr you know, pictures froze or something else, and it just freaked the hell, freaked the <laughs> hell out of it. And I, I just sort of went off, and mm. but now it's just kind, of, it's it's kind of the process. Yeah, always yeah. had the black cup hand. It just it just happens sometimes. So, yeah. but I think it seems to be okay now because I can hear you okay, I can see you okay. It's all good. So uh, we'll uh, we'll carry on. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So. Oh come on. Okay. Here we go. Right. So, Gary, let's take it in a different direction. I mean, obviously, you just talked about using hashtags and using memes and all that kind of stuff. And obviously, when you are creating content when you are you know putting tweets out there then it's important to have a variety can you give us a little bit more information on what kind of tweets can people be doing like can they include memes can they include gifs can they include pictures what what kind of things should they be putting on twitter to to attract that uh, audience and also if you can talk a little bit about how to use hashtags because I think that's another thing people quite struggle with they don't quite understand what what hashtags are and how to use them oh cool. yeah well one of the things you know just imagine so you're looking at you know what to tweet what should I put out there mm. so again just think about what is your audience gonna see right you know, I did, I did an interview one, one time with a guy, and he, he gave me a term in my head that sort of stuck in there is you want to be able to have thumb stopping content. Mm. Okay. So if people are if people are on their phones or on their tablets, they're scrolling. Yeah. So what's going to stop them? And so imagine, so if you have nothing but memes and pictures, yeah. picture quotes, and you're thinking, it, you know, again, that becomes a little mind numbing mm. and it you know again and gifts you have to be able to look at is is your audience responding to them me personally i think it's kind of distracting because it's like <laughs> okay so what the, the thing is just a loop what's the point i i don't get it maybe it's maybe it's an age thing <laughs> maybe it, 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 it's something else but if your audience gets it yeah then you, then then you got to be able to do it mm. You know, I've always used these motivational messages, and I've you know blended into as the time comes in there. You know, we've we've created memes, 
My wife's a great graphic artist, so she's created a lot of the stuff for me. She created the images on our site and all the promos that we put out there. So you know, it just becomes a balance. You know, I heard somebody say once that you know, w- one out of every four should be a sort of a picture, so right. something that's visual. Okay. And you know, and this also becomes up another question because this came up the other night on another interview was 140 characters or 280. I've always loved the 140 because it forced us to be able to get our mind down and be able to communicate in shorter thing because I think people are going to be, they're looking quick. They're not going to read a, you know, they want bullets, right? So yeah. if they're scrolling through, thumb come, stopping kind of thing. So if, if you've got a paragraph, how am I going to know what the main point is? Mm. And so, And sometimes you may need it. And so that's why there's always a blend. And that's kind of, you need to be able to so just sort of work with it. Yeah, but you know what? Probably the whole thing with all of that too is consistency. Hmm. You need to be tweeting every day, you know. And because I put these motivational quotes out all the time, every day somebody is responding to me, telling me how those messages have made an impact in their life, hmm. or as a reminder, oh, my grandma used to say something like this, or my professor used to say something like this all the time so you know it's great you know i use this philosophy this is a zig ziglar quote a long time ago you said you said says you know that they say that motivation doesn't last but either it is bathing that's why you need to do both <laughs> every day <laughs> i like it so, i like so it. i just yeah. i just look at my my tweet stream is that motivational shower that you can come into whatever you want to be able to get an uplifting message right and going through them. Now, also about hashtags, and, and that's an incredible thing. Now, for, for people who don't know, hashtags is the pound sign in front of a word or a series of words. And that sort of implies that people who are using that are making an intentional use of that term that they want to be found in that dis- discussion. Right. And so when people came out, you know, so the question is, oh, do I, you know, do I make my own personal hashtag? Hmm. Well, he, here's my personal lesson on personal hashtags. Right. And, and go through it. I created a whole lot of affirmations. And I called them just for today affirmations. But I didn't use affirmation. I just said just for today. Because hmm. as, as a Reiki master, one of my Reiki prayers was just for today on this. And the, you know, just sort of little reminders, little nudges of what we need to do every day to become even better. Right. And as a, as a coach, I also know that it takes 60 or 90 days to be able to create a, a new habit. Yeah. So these are all sort of little reminders. Instead of try, trying to be able to uh, eat the whole elephant, mm. we just, uh, each day, I'm just going to, each day, I'm going to make better choices. Each day, I'm going to brush my teeth. Each day, I'm going to smile. Each day, I'm going to do this. But nobody was responding to my just for today because that all that was more important to me because that was my theme. Mm. Nobody else really got it. So what you want to be able to do, what then I did is I looked and said, okay, these are affirmations. Mm. Affirmation is a bigger topic. Yeah. So when I, so when I went and studied and looked at hashtag affirmation, there's a lot of affirmations out there. Mm. So I added a second hashtag. So it's hashtag just for today, hashtag affirmation. So now I'm found in the bigger conversation. So the lesson is for people is when you come out there is, you know, when you start out, what is the bigger conversation that you want to have? Right. So whether it's marketing, if it's business, it's small business, social media, if it's massage, whatever it is, go look at that bigger conversation. Establish yourself in those conversations and, and that is going to be able to establish you on Twitter and be able to get create your influence and everything else. Now you've got people coming back to your site, your page. Yeah. Now you now you can start introducing a personal hashtag because they can connect that with you. Yeah. Instead of just putting one out there and nobody knows who the hell you are or what or what it's about. Yeah. Yeah. And and I, I still get it. People say, oh well these affirmations they should be every day. And and so what I did is I wrote a blog explaining why the whole thing about eating an elephant one bite at a time and all. So I just tell people, see, yeah, every day is the goal. 
but it's yeah. overwhelming for a lot of people. So mm-hmm. go read my blog at bit.ly forward slash Gary EE, <laughs> and then you can be able to read more about why why we're doing it. But hashtags are a great way. Remember we talked about the stadium. Yeah. This is one of the ways that you can go find the conversations that you want to be a part of, is to be able to use the search box up on Twitter to go, go find those hashtags, go find those conversations. And that's the way you can be able to connect too, is be able to build your following. Yeah. There's a great thing on Twitter when you start out. You you can follow five thousand people at, at first hmm. with no limitations. Once you get to five thousand, there's a ten percent rule that you have to be able to. But you can go out and follow a whole bunch of people and by again, by you doing that first and you got good content and you engage well, excuse me, people will follow you back. Yeah, and, and that that's that's how you you know you build your presence through your tweets, the, the, the causes that you want to go through, and you know that's another thing too. You know we talked about you mentioned causes. Yeah, you, you can be able to use all of these things that we talked about. You can be able to talk about tweets. You can use the keywords for the cause to be able to come out there and say, okay, you know, if it's about kindness or growth or unity or equal rights or all of these other things. Find a whole bunch of messages that establish you saying, this is what I'm all about. Mm, yeah. And so that there's there's no question. There's no question when somebody comes onto your site is, you know, they want to be able to know, okay, this is an expert in this area. Yeah. You know, I had one client who was a massage therapist and a landscaper. I could see the build, you know, the bridge in between, but a lot of other people would be confusing. Mm. So, so what you really want to be able to say is, okay, so if I'm doing, if I have a social cause or if I have a bigger passion, you know, about personal development yeah, and some of the other things I want to work on is equality and mental health. So these are the things that I want to be able to work on. They're very, very important because I know I've dealt with them and a lot of other people are dealing with them and the world just needs inequality and equal rights and yeah. much more understanding. Yeah. Than what's going on, sure. we just need to. But I think we can be able to create that through tweets. I've collected over twenty thousand tweets. I've got a library wow. of stuff that we can be able to customize for people, mm. or you can go you can go find them on other sites. You can find them on Twitter. Just put the search words in that you want to go find. They'll bring up all the tweets and anything else that people are writing about it. But you can create memes that that have it. You right. know. We, and then have those pictures because the pictures say a thousand words and memes get like 20% more engagement mm. tweets with tweets with you know two hashtags get like 38 more percent more engagement right on twitter it's different if you use more than 3 more than 2 actually your engagement decreases Right. Okay. In, in, Instagram, the sort of sweet spot is like nine to eleven of what I've heard, mm. but on twi- Twitter, you know, sweet spot is two to be able to get more engagement. Right. But you can be able to do that, and you know, another thing too, <coughs> as far as promoting causes and anything else, is tweet chats. Right. Is you can be able to have a question and answer or discussion that's based around a hashtag. And get people to come in and have conversations and be able to, to raise awareness. Mm. I mean, these are some of the ways. Again, and all of those quotes, you know, for 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 good and for bad, they don't go away. <laughs> so yeah. the more good, the, yeah. so the more good messages we put out there, it's going to be found. Mm. And Twitter, Twitter, and Google have have a. Uh, have an agreement that tweets if can get found in Google searches. Right. So if 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 you're establishing yourself as a subject matter expert in certain things, you're going to find in more in Twitter searches, but then you're also going to start showing up on other internet searches as well. Your yeah. tweets. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And so we just yeah we need more exposure. We need people to be able to see it. We get more voices in the choir. We can, we can change the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and Gary, thank you so much for sharing that. Again, you have such a deep, in-depth knowledge of this platform. This is phenomenal. And you are, again, very open in sharing it. So thank you for that. I think me personally and everybody else who are actually watching this right now definitely got a tremendous amount of value out of that. Uh, and that was, that was absolutely fantastic. 
I'm just wondering, obviously, when somebody is starting off and, and they're trying to share other people's content, how important is it? How important is it that you are actually engaging with other top influencers and you're sharing their content? Well, I think there were a lot of things. On one level, it shows your audience who your influencers are. Mm. So it tells us, you know, when I started out, you know, Bob Berg, Tony Robbins, all the motivational, uh, you know, and so I would go search for the, for their names and quotes and, and also some of the other people that I know that have shared them all the time. Right. Because it just share, it, you know, it just creates a little, again, another level of trust for your audience. Saying, okay, so this is who this person has been influenced by. Oh, I like Tony Robbins. I like Abraham. I like Hay House. I like these things. So I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna like you. I, I, I should have a reason to like you. <laughs> you <Yeah. can> be. <laughs> and so that's one way. Um, like we said, motivational messages are the most pro most prominently retweeted topic on all of Twitter. Right. Probably, you know, a lot of people need those motivational paths. Mm. <laughs> and so again, your audience sees that. But again, too, if you the other aspect of it is is okay. All right, my my primary account, I get probably two three hundred retweets a day, so there's no way for me to be able to keep up on mm. all of them. Right. But there are a couple of people who are retweeting me a lot mm. every day. Right. And so when I scroll through my Hootsuite columns, I'm seeing them and I'm recognizing them, and I'm I'm grateful. So if nothing else, every day I'm saying thank you or appreciate that or I'll go find something else that they've, re, you know, retweet one of their other retweets or one of their original messages mm -hmm. and something else. And I think, you know, that's a great way to be able to get the attention of an influencer mm -hmm. is, you know, we talked about, you know, the, the list building project that we've got going yeah. is it's, it's, it's others promotion. So somebody else is out there looking to be able to promote me to other things and say, okay, now you've got my attention. So now I'm more apt to be able to have a conversation with you. Yeah. But a lot of, a lot of times people will come up with too big of an ask. Hmm. And it's like, you know, if you get that, Hey, thanks for follow, you know, go, go listen to my record and tell me what it about it and, and give me these ratings and everything else. And I just write back to him and says, you know, it sounds like about an hour's worth of work, so that'd be about two hundred dollars. So, click click here to be able to make a donation. Yeah, because yeah. it's like okay, so I can see it's all advantage to you. There's no advantage to me or to my audience mm -hmm. for you asking that. Yeah, but you want it. So by retweeting an influencer, somebody else you may or may not want to be able to work with, or whatever the motivation is, you got to get on their radar. And what a better what a better way is to be able to retweet them or compliment their stuff and stuff like that. It's like okay, it's, you know, I always use a lot of dating analogies. All of this is like dating. Nice. <laughs> you know, you, yeah. You, you know, you don't try to close a deal on on the first date. But, you know, make, a lot of people make the mistake, and it could be fun for a little while, but the probability of long term relationships are small. Hmm. You get better odds with relationships that develop over time, and we know and trust, and we have some exchanges and go through that. And then there's a natural close, and like you said, your relationships with, with Corey. You know, mm -hmm. you started out having a conversation, you had more and more and more, and now you're looking to be able, to, you know, for co other collaborations to be able to do. But it it's, it starts out with something small, and then if there's some good seeds, it can always grow into something better. Yeah. But that's why you, that's why you want to be able to retweet something because it's, especially you know if you want to be able to borrow their influence or get their audience or do something. But I always think about first, and it's a big lesson that I've learned from people is, don't come to them and say, "Can you do this for me?" As I tell, how, you know, what can I do for you? And probably even better yet is if I researched you and saw your shows or saw that your Twitter account or something. So if I found a need that I could be able to fill for you, mm. that's a better way to be able to 
come at it. And but you can't come to that first and say, "Hey, I want to be able to help you build your Twitter follower," and you don't know me from anything. Yeah, yeah. 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 So we we got we got to go on a few dates first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that analogy, Gary. And to be honest with you, you know that what you shared again, I think, is really powerful. What I heard was that Twitter is not just a social media platform where you can share stuff and you can build an audience and gain their trust and also you know m you might be able to to actually then get them to redirect like towards your website or whatever else but it's also a great networking tool i think so it, you know and i always tell people there's a few points we want to be talking. it is networking mm. and go through there and i think one of the big things is when people ask about roi on twitter or something and it's like, okay, well, if you're selling sex toys or vapes or something else, there's no emotional connection. So you can be able to put it out there and you probably will get sales. But if you're if you're coaching, you're speaking, authors or something else, there's a personal connection. That's a personal service. Yeah, yeah. So you got to be able to invest more time in things. Um, so that's one aspect. Twitter was designed as a and I heard Jack Dorsey talk about this once. Their vision was it to be a global town square. Okay, right. So, you know, a Saturday morning market. Mm. Picture any, any town anywhere. And people got their, you know, their trucks open, the tr back seats to the car, whatever else, and they're selling tomatoes, they're selling sweaters, they're selling candles, somebody's on the guitar, somebody's doing a political rant, somebody's got books, <coughs> somebody's got old clothes, whatever else. So there's something for anybody. Mm. And there's no filters. So, you know, so even, you know, inappropriate language or what somebody even see is pornographic or something else, but there's something for everybody and you can just go find all of those little corners, whatever you want. Right. And, you know, so it, it, that's great. There needs to be no limit. And, you know, somebody asked me a long time ago, says, you know, you know, why are, why are you letting escorts follow you? And I'm going to go, well, cause they're probably business people. <laughs> And, and they probably still have some of the emotion, same emotional blockages or something else mm. that I could prob probably relate to. So I'm not seeing that what they're doing. They're doing what they, what they could do or what they need to be able to do yeah. that doesn't necessarily negate that I could work with them. Mm. I'm open to it. Some other people may, may not be, but... <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, 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 that... Definitely, definitely. I mean, at the end of the day, the the networking side of social media is really powerful. And, you know, you just obviously, you know, talked about Twitter and, and certainly that seems like a really powerful networking tool as well. I'm just wondering, like people might have a question around um, monetization. Like they hear, you hear stories about, you know, YouTubers and Instagram people, you know, making money off those platforms. Is it possible to monetize Twitter? I think it is, again, depending on what you're doing. Mm. Right. You know, for the people people that I'm working with, you know, social media should be an extension of people driving you to driving to your websites. Right. I, I explain to people the ROI for social media like that is website traffic, mm -hmm. people subscribe subscribing to your newsletter people coming to your webinars and going through there. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I kind of believe that again, it's a personal service, personal touch kind of thing. You got to be, you got to build a relationship, mm -hmm. but it all depends on what it is. If you're just selling CDs, like we said, CDs or toys or anything else like that, there's no emotional connection. So yeah. you could probably do it and be able to craft it in ways, be able to do it. but again, depending on what your purpose is. Mm -hmm. I always look at it as like, okay, what can we drive to traffic? And I've seen this. I've, I've done affiliate marketing th for for different projects, and I've created twenty and thirty thousand clicks in a month to places and got no conversion. Right. And what that told me was my clicks generated traffic. <laughs> what they what they saw when they got to that site 
was not what they were expecting or mm. came across in a diff- in a different voice. Yeah, yeah. So, so the the methods and the things that I'm talking about, I know generate clicks, mm. and that's why par- I think part of the conversion and part of that ROI comes in the next part is copywriting and making sure your website's clean and making you know what have you got to offer, and if there's consi- can, again consistency. So if I come if I come to your website and I like what I'm seeing, I say, okay, well, I want to learn more from this guy. So sign up for your newsletter, and newsletter only comes out once every four months. What what's the point? Yeah, what's the point? <laughs> yeah, true. But true. so you you know like anything like relationships, you want a good relationship to work, you got to be committed. You, you got to show up every day. You, you know if if you don't, if, you know you don't show up for your girlfriend for six months. <laughs> she's yeah. probably going to go. She's probably going to go find someplace else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, that makes sense. That makes absolute sense. So yeah, perfect. Thank you for sharing that, um, Gary. Is there a time, or is there is there a type of uh, personality for who the Twitter might not be a suitable platform? Well, again, the global town square. So there's something for everybody. Uh, but you know, people who are again who are just self-centered. I think mm-hmm. you know if if it's nothing about if it's only about you. And I've seen people who have surprisingly high cloud scores, but when they go look at their sites, it's just news feeds, and there's no engagement, and there's no real, not even retweets. Mm-hmm. Nobody's even retweeting and commenting and stuff like that. So you know, that's just showing me that people who are just pushing information out there to maybe push algorithm numbers up say hey I got a presence and stuff is going on in my account but if nobody's engaging with it nobody's talking about it nobody's retweeting it I kind of wonder if it makes any sense at all and yeah so so if you're not really interested in other people or mm. really interested in, in making other in somebody else's life better mm then you could be a troll and try to take a bite out of somebody else's success. Yeah, yeah. Or, or, or try to bait somebody in, into something else. But, you know, again, it's like anything else. How much energy do you put into those people? You know, I, I tend to ignore them. I tend to block them and go away. And probably when enough people do that, then they realize, oh, this doesn't work for me. They'll go someplace else. It's same rules in life. Right. You know, you know if you got a relative or you go to a, a networking event or somebody else and it's all about them mm. nobody's sitting at the bar with them nobody's talking to them and they're they're coming they're coming back to the next meeting even more hungry and more desperate and people will spell smell desperation yeah yeah of course of course yeah and again that that makes perfect sense um i'm i'm wondering in terms of you know we've talked about a few things we talked about making sure that you come from a place of value and you give first we've talked about the fact you know how consistent you need to be with your content what kind of content you need to be creating how you need to approach your audience and try and engage with them and you know appreciate what they're doing there etc and your followers are there any other strategies that we need to know about in terms of how to leverage twitter Oh, Mr. We talk, you know, presence, presence, engagement. Mm. Uh, you know, and I know that my calendar is fills up more the more time that I invest in talking to people on Twitter and engaging. Bye. Awesome. And so that that's one of the biggest things because we just look at and this was a great thing. And one of my sales coaches always had the thing about it's stage selling. Right. So we just look at it in, in process. So here's these motivational quotes. Here are these things. Here's these Twitter tips. Everything else. So that's just building the trust and rapport. Mm. And so we go through there. And then if you start asking me questions and going through that stuff, so, so you know we just move from stage to stage to stage. And then you know, for, okay, so we're, we're tweeting. We're going through this. You like my stuff. You list me. Going through it. Boom, 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 boom. Now we're going. Okay, let's have a conversation. Let's meet face to face, so you know we can be uh, halfway around the world from each other. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And we have the technology, so there's no reason why we can't go through there. And I really found people around the world, you know, we, we have the same issues. We have the same things. Yeah. We're going through the same struggles. You know, they're, mm -hmm. they're may, you know, may look a little different. We're going through there, but I really believe that the whole world is melding anyways. So, you know, Norwegian heritage. So unless you're in Norway, <laughs> you, there, are, there aren't too many people who are going to look like me <laughs> in another hundred years. So I, I just know, you know, that's a trend. That's something that's going on in the world. And we just need to be able to, to look at the differences. Yeah, absolutely. And, and and be able to appreciate it. And I think that's the one thing is, you know, if you have a presence, you're going out there, you're authentic, you're loving, you're caring, mm. and you want to be able to make the world a better place. And I think, you know, like I said, we need to be able to understand one each other. There, there's just so much stuff that just comes out of people are coming out of fear or they were told, well, these they do this, they do that. <coughs> My grandma was that, you know. As loving as she was about it, everybody that I, all the girls I dated in high school, the first question she asked me, are they Lutheran? <laughs> and, you know, it wasn't the first question I was asking him. It probably wasn't even the hundredth question I was asking <laughs> any girl, <laughs> girl in, in, in high school. Right. And, and, you know, you know, and I know that every culture is like that. Mm. Every tribe, the purpose of a tribe is to keep the tribe together. Yeah. And in the old world, it was probably the best rules for survival. Mm. But now the world is much more fluid and more interactions, you know, jets and everything else. But now social media, you know, we can see a lot of different cultures. We can see a lot of other things. And once we can get through accents or whatever else may trip people up and say, oh, well, they do this or they're all trying to do that. No, they're not. They're all looking to be able to be loved. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and then Gary, that's such a powerful message. Thank you for sharing that. I think that's a that's a great message that you're sharing there. And also the fact I know you're trying to, you know, follow that up. You have a vision about how you can use social media to connect people around the world and how they can they can actually learn about each other. So I think again you have a very, very powerful vision and a really, really strong message there. And thank you for sharing that. You came on and you added so much value. To be honest with you, I mean, I don't think we have time. We have enough time to sit down and dig deep with all this stuff. You know, there's just so much to cover. And you have such a deep knowledge, such a, you know, comprehensive knowledge of this platform and how to boost engagement and engage with the audience and, you know, attract the audience and do all those things. It's fantastic. I, first of all, would love to do a round two. Um, if you're up for it, sometime. oh my but yeah, oh, whenever you want, just just reach out. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. That would be perfect. And secondly, I really want to know how can we help you right now, and how can people connect with you? Well, you can connect with me on Twitter at Gary Loper. That's my primary account. Awesome. Web the website is GaryLoper.com. G A R Y L O P E R dot com. Find me on Facebook both their personal and business page, LinkedIn. It's the only one that's looking like this. There are a couple other Gary Lopers, but not too many. <laughs> none, of them, <laughs> none of them look like this. So we all have some variation of a picture that's pretty close to that. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, so that's where we're at. And, you know, there's, there's other collaboration projects. You know, we're looking to be able to build, build a, a community of people who are collaborating to be able to co-promote each other's free offer. Right. So if you if you have a free offer that's up and ready to be able to go and you, you, you're in alignment with my energy and the conversation and my the things that we've discussed here, yeah, and you think think there's a good match, just send an email to me, Gary at GaryLoper com. We'll set up a meeting and we'll be able to see if uh, if it's a good fit that you can be able to promote twenty other people's free offers which in turn is going to be able to build your list so you won't even have to promote yours anymore. Mm, yeah, that's powerful. That is really powerful. And guys, if you're watching this, Gary came on, he added a tremendous amount of value to us. There is just so much to talk, so much to discuss. Uh, Gary has so much value to offer. He was so open, so genuine, so transparent. He didn't really hold anything back. And I love it. I absolutely love it. That's, that's why I bring on these amazing guests so we can learn from them. And obviously, Gary is one of those people who was just completely open. He's got some 
you know, really high level knowledge of this platform. But he's not just keeping it to himself. He's open. He's sharing it with everybody else. And I love that. He's got a great vision. He's got a really strong message. And I would, like I said, would love to have him back on. But for you guys, I know there are going to be some really important takeaways for me as well. Things like how we can actually use hashtags properly, right? And what are the kind of content we need to be creating, how often we need to engage, etc, etc. There's just so much value here. And I, I just want to say, you know what, you need to take action on this one, guys, you need to go ahead and reach out to Gary, whether that's on Twitter, whether through his website or email, whatever it is, Facebook page, but reach out to him. I think he's got so much knowledge, so much value to offer. It's tremendous. And especially if you're starting off, you don't know what to do. You're stuck. You're not sure where to go. Well, here's your solution. Okay. Gary has given you the keys to the kingdom. He's told you how you can connect with him. And also the fact you, that you might, you might not be a beginner, but you do have a following. You do have a business behind it or, or something that you, a cause, etc., that you're trying to promote. Well, then Gary's got some amazing strategies that you can go ahead um, and, and implement. So make sure you guys go ahead and take action. I always encourage you guys to take action. So go ahead and connect with Gary. Um, Gary, I'm conscious of your time, but seriously, you are just phenomenal. And I'd love to have you back on. Um, it was an absolute blast. I mean, we discussed so much and there's so many things, so much value you dropped on us. It was, it was really, really great. My, my pleasure. That, and that's part of my intention is to overwhelm <laughs> and, <laughs> and, you know, but we just tell people is just go back and rewind this thing and listen and stop and just pick out a little nugget or something mm. else and just, and just go apply it. You know, there's so much, like I said, this was, you know, 35 years of customer service experience, marketing, a lot of other things, sales stuff, you know, eight full years on Twitter every single day. So it's, mm. you know, this is just a lifetime of knowledge and, we, and it's, I've just been able to blend it all together on a platform that and make it and make it work and know that this is a way that can work for a lot of people. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you, Gary, once again for your time. Guys, if you're watching this, again, I'm very thankful that you spend this time with me. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next one. In the meantime, stay awesome, hustle hard, and make sure you take action. All the best. Take care.